All right. This is the first episode of T-Boy Swag, a T for T radio show hosted by me, DJ Pissboy. And I have my friend today, AJ. Hi, I feel like I should have a cool DJ name. Yeah, you need a cool DJ name. What's your DJ name? I feel like DJ AJ is just awful sounding enough. Yeah, DJ AJ is like a god awful name, but it's like so good. Like it's so bad that it's good. Yeah. If horseshoes around. I'm DJ AJ. (laughs) Yeah. DJ AJ, would you like to introduce yourself? Who are you? Who the fuck are you? And why are you here? (laughs) Yeah. Hi, I'm AJ. I am Evan's friend from high school. Um, So we go way back. Um, I am a history of art student. I, um, I like Dungeons and Dragons. I collect novelty earrings. And I have T-Boy swag. I use he, him, and she, her pronouns, but the she, her is, like, ironic and, like, only trans people can use it. So if you're cis, don't even try it. Um, And, yeah, that's kind of the, that's my deal. Fuck yeah. I figured, uh, I realized this is for step of actually probably introduce myself. Um, I'm I'm DJ Pissboy. If you know my actual name, good on you. Um, Cool. Um, but for all intents and purposes, I am DJ Pissboy. I am Pissboy in sadly many parts of my life. It's it's become a second name, but not by choice. Um, I was there for the birth of Pissboy. Yeah, you were there for the birth of Pissboy. We need to do a whole episode that like, <gasps> wait, my birthday is like February 6th. Like the second episode, if, my, if the other bitches can't do it, DJ, we're going to do Pissboy lore. Pissboy lore. So listeners, stay stay listening because maybe you'll find out why I'm piss boy. Um, it's not what you think it is. It, whatever you're thinking, it's not it. It's not, <laughs> it. It's not it. Um, yeah, uh, I I go to UCLA, hence I'm on this radio station. Um, I use he, him, and z, her pronouns. The z, her is just because I fucking love Reba's Doom Patrol that much, and I'm ill um what do i do um i'm wearing a kate bush t-shirt right now and i kind of love it it's my favorite t-shirt um i i like video games that's an that's an ill part of me that's a flop but um what else do i like i like reading wikipedia articles um i i have a ton of shoes like an ungodly amount of shoes um, and all of your shoes have distinct T-Boy swag. They all have distinct T-Boy swag, even like my six inch heels. It's T-Boy oh, swag. For sure. For sure. I I have a lot of T-Boy swag, I think. I'm, I'm oh, you want to you wanna know something that I haven't specifically mentioned to you yet, but I think reveals a lot about my personality. Yes, I would love to um, hear that. Yeah, I, well, I got rehired for the summer camp I worked at last summer, and I'm officially going to be like the arts and crafts director. <laughs> um, so my new personality trait is arts and crafts director. I'm sorry, but okay, okay. Today, this episode is going to be about what is trans masculinity? What does it mean to us? And I just want to set this up of why AJ is here is because AJ is the most butch lesbian I've ever met in my goddamn life. <laughs> and it just keeps getting worse. <laughs> like this is the new, this is the new, like, this is the new nail on the coffin. <laughs> 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 let's list out, <laughs> let's list out, list out how, how it goes. You're, you're six two, right? Yeah. Six two. So well over six foot. Big tall. You drew, your, your parents, you drive a Subaru at home, right? Uh, yeah, my mom drives a Subaru <laughs> Forester that I steal every time I'm home because I hate driving a pickup truck, which I feel like loses me butch points, but I just don't want to learn how to park it. Okay, but you're driving a Subaru. Yeah. So, like, I feel like it, it comes back around. Um, like, the points are returned just by the fact that it's a Subaru. Um, you go to Bryn Mawr. <laughs> which is an all women's it's a historically historic. women's college and our confessions page uh, actually our confessions page had a turf infestation 
oh my god <laughs> yeah someone was like as a cis lesbian i just don't see why and it's like ah shut up and die okay so yeah Bryn Mawr just like historically women's college and has had this issue very wow uh i did not know that um yeah. you you're now an art director at a summer camp on catalina yeah I love, I love you, AJ. I just want to say that. I adore you. I'm also three months on tea, which I think is pretty butch of me. Um, that and is I, the most butch part. And in the words of my friends, I sound like I have a chronic head cold, which I'm just at that phase in the like voice transition process. A little bit. You do sound like you are a little stuffy. I'm not going to lie, but it's swag. It's swag. Mm-hmm. My gosh, you have like... I just remembered this one Tumblr post that was like, this person like, you have like T-Boy swag, but in like a dyke way. And then they said dyke boy swag. And I think that's you. (laughs) I've got, I've got specifically the flavor I have is girl boy swag. Girl boy swag. Like me and my partner refer to each other as girl boyfriend and boy girlfriend. That's so, that's such a serve. That's such a serve. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. So yeah, like we're just gonna set up this discussion of trans masculinity of AJ is possibly the most butch lesbian tempered butch. And then <laughs> that's a horrible phrase. But um on I I look and sound very like passing masculinely, but I am I am not I'm not a man. I'm a man the same way a drawings person. <laughs> um, so let's start there. Um I guess like I'll start with my shit. Um, I grew up with like zero men in my life. So all of my trans masculinity is coming from a weird Amazonian place where I vaguely know how like cis men are and I don't want to find out. <laughs> They're an enigma yeah. and it's okay. Um, but yeah, like despite like our very different, I guess, genders, well, whatever, we're not different. For our handshaking emoji. It's just yeah. other bitches like to be like, you guys are separate. It's like, no, bitch. That's my best friend. That's my shoddy. Shoddy. Okay. So AJ, what does trans masculinity mean to you? Um, it means that I'm like, I don't know. I feel like my gender is just masculinity, but like lesbian masculinity. It's so hard to like, it's, it's hard to put into words. And um, like you would think of someone who basically is like, you, well, I was almost an English major. You'd think I'd be better at the whole like putting it into words thing. But it's really like a, if you get it, you get it type deal of like, I love women with an asterisk of like, my partner's not a, a quote woman, but like, whatever, that's their deal. Um, and like I'm not a woman but I'm also not a man I'm just here and I like wearing men's jeans so like I don't know that's something I like having what I call a shitty little mustache like a lot of my interest in masculinity is honestly like aesthetic and I don't think that that's like a problem like who cares it's gender it's here for us to 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 fuck around with like two-year-olds eating play-doh no like a hundred percent like gender being like oh you need to like you need to feel everything so full like fully and like intensely of like you are a man and yeah. to be trans is so bullshit because it's just like i am not like a fucking kid <laughs> like yeah <laughs> i'm my yeah. own dude like <laughs> Yeah, and I like, I I used to, for a long time, I defined my gender by dysphoria, especially when I was trying to explain it to my very cisgender parents, particularly my very cisgender mother, Um, which, oh boy. Um, But like a lot of times I was like, it it brings me discomfort to be feminine when I should have been framing it as it brings me joy to be masculine, because that's what it is. Like, I'm not on testosterone because I am a grand victim of suffering as a universe. I want testosterone because it makes me swag as hell. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. That's a great way of putting it. I think like 
when I first came out as trans, like I was in like the eighth grade and like so much of it, like mind you, this was like 2015. Yeah. So it was a fucking long time ago, <laughs> like 2015, 2016-ish. So like I was already finding like it was already but so um I had some I had some bad opinions on trans stuff in high school. I had so much like I guess like when I first got into high school, like at like eighth grade was when I came out. And so 2015, 2016, it I it was very stuck in that type in that period's like perspective on like transness, I guess, where yeah. like um, I get like I was never Calvin Gara like trans medicalist in any way because I thought it was stupid. I was there for like a week on Tumblr and I was just like, all these people suck. <laughs> um, and then moved on. But like I never like I always because when you first come out as trans or you first kind of realize, oh wow, I am like not uh I'm not whatever. Like I'm I'm just some guy. You're just like you kind of go through like shit online and then like everybody's like telling you oh if you feel these things then you're trans and you need to feel them this way and it's just like not true but you kind of get yeah. lulled into that and you're just like you kind of almost like gaslight yourself into thinking it's that because I think like for me like I thought I had a lot of dysphoria and that's what was motivating me but I felt euphoria like I realized that like me going on testosterone and me getting top surgery was part of euphoria. Like it gave yeah. me joy. And then even like when I was at home before top surgery, like when we were on COVID times, like I, or even before COVID time, whenever I was home, like in my room, I would be sitting there shirtless vibing with my titties out because it was nice. Like yeah. it was just comforting. It was just mainly like the reason I got top surgery was mainly I was sick and tired of wearing a binder all the time for going outside. <sighs> Yeah, that's so much of my motivation for wanting top surgery at this point. It's like wearing a binder is like uncomfortable and I already have back problems, but like I just don't like the way that my shirts fit. Like it's not even like a, I hate the way my body looks. It's just like a, I don't think my shirts fit me as well as they could. Oh yeah, no, that's 100% the same. It's just like I want like this to be a little flatter so my shirts will look better. Like that was the sole motivation of it. It's just like maybe this will make me look like a little better and I think I look fucking great I do miss my yeah. titties though I will say like you know how like you kind of like when like it was when I had tits I would hold them like gently yeah. like just cut them <laughs> and it's really com comforting now yeah. I can't do that there's nothing there I I yeah I like I'll wake up with like just a hand on my tit and I'm like what okay I also most... chronically wake up having taken off my shirt in the middle of the night and I don't remember doing it. <laughs> so That's like, interesting. You know... I take off my socks a lot in the night, which I think is common, but I also do take off my pants. Um, ever since I was a kid, I never liked pants. I'm not wearing pants right now. Um, <laughs> I'm wearing a shirt, but no pants. Pants are evil. Um... But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, when we met in high school, it was like, we all, we both met each other kind of in weird, like, at least I met you, like, and like, have been friends with you during a really, like, interesting time of your gender, like, yeah. discovery, I guess, just because like, I, like, when I came into high school, I kind of figured some stuff out. It had changed a lot when I went on testosterone, was yeah. really what changed a ton. Um but like with you, like when I first met you, I met you freshman year of high school. So we were like, what, yeah. how old were we? I was like 14, having just turned 15, maybe. Yeah, we're 14, 15 yeah, year olds. Because my birthday's in September, so I would have like just been turning 15. Yeah, yeah. We we're 14, 15-ish. So yeah. we were like pretty young. And I remember like, I met at a GSA meeting. I think so, because we didn't, like, cross paths in, like, any of our classes until, like, senior year. Yeah, senior year. Jesus. It's the Jesus. first time we had classes together because we were still in English. Yeah, but in my freshman year of high school, I was, like, fresh on the gender train. Um, I had, like, just switched my name. And I had actually been going by, like, AJ, like, online since about eighth grade. Um, but at the time, my... <laughs> I'm actually fine saying my dead name on the radio because I think it's really funny. My name used to be Jessica. <laughs> but 
oh god no offense to anyone named jessica i love you for it but like i just am so not a jessica that like if someone uses that for me it genuinely takes me like a minute to remember that i used to be that um but i was going by like aj on some capacity mostly online like not really in person and i was going by like they them pronouns like i was like trying it out it was like a new exciting thing but like again like only on like the LGBT Instagram I co-ran for like two months. It, I, this was when I was 14. Um, and then I co-ran for like two months. Um, I was like fresh off of my first ever like quote breakup, but it was like my eighth grade girlfriend and it was mutual and over text. And I still had like a very, like I was like, I conceptualized non-binary as like the third gender. Like I was still kind of in that mindset. Um, and I was like, I like came out in like a GSA meeting for the first time, like out loud um, about being non-binary. And for a long time, I was just like non-binary was just like my thing. And I wasn't a man and I wasn't a woman. And that was kind of it. Um, now I like, I feel like, I don't think my gender has changed fundamentally. I just think the way that I have approached it has, has changed and, and nuanced. Like, I think my understanding of it has become more intricate and I've figured out what masculinity looks like for me rather than just wearing pants sometimes because like that's what I thought it was because I would like my mom never wore makeup or did her hair there's never been any like she had like one eyeshadow palette and it was the same one she used for her wedding day um so like I didn't grow up around a ton of like femininity so I didn't really have a great understanding of like feminine presentation in the first place so then i struggled to figure out how to diverge from that if that makes sense when i realized that it wasn't what i wanted i didn't fully understand what i didn't want and i and and like femininity and masculinity as a dichotomy like were something i had trouble with because i was going based off of what like 14 year olds think gender is and gender presentation is so i had a very like infantilized conception of gender because I was a kid. Yeah, you were literally, like, you're a very tall child, but you're still a child. Like, I was 14. Of course, I didn't understand the intricacies of my own identity. And, like, for a while, I, like, struggled with, like, the idea that my conception of my own gender could change. And I felt like I was, like, lying to myself or had been somehow lying to other people before I realized like, okay, like if I dye my hair a different color, that doesn't mean I was lying before that I'm lying now. It just means I'm trying something new out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I had like a kind of similar situation with the like not really, like not kind of like accepting that like my own gender could change for a mm -hmm. while. Like it took a while for me to really get it. And like, it's so crazy. Like I'm um, like, I should say like for my name, stuff like i have been called evan my entire life because my dead name is evangeline and that shit's 10 letters long <laughs> like um my mom gave me evan because it's like you know what this is four letters long <laughs> this is easy to remember so i've been evan my entire life i remember like when i first came out i really wanted a new name even though evan was like a perfectly fine masculine name i just felt like obligated because so many trans people change their names drastically when they right. transition that I was just like, I need to have this name, I need to have a new name. And I remember like my first name, I just remember this because Glad still emails me under this dead name, uh, under this name. It was fucking Mycroft. <laughs> Listen, let me, I'm going to explain this shit to you because it's, it, <laughs> on one level, it's Sherlock. On like three other levels, it's actually a fucking robot AI from a book from the 60s that like canonically is going through a gender crisis. And his name's Mike. That's it's, the most you thing I think I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Like, imagine if you met me and, like, I was my prop, and I've been my prop this entire time. I don't think we would be friends. <laughs> I'm sorry. My prop? 
Love it Lane. That's it. a terrible name to choose for you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry if any, I'm so sorry if anyone's named Mycroft. I just went through such an intense BBC Sherlock phase that I cannot divorce it from that association in my mind and heart. The thing is, like for me, it's like I had a huge BBC Sherlock phase, but also one of my favorite books when I was like at that time, or even like a little bit before, I don't remember when I read it. It's called The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. And well, like it's basically libertarianism, the book, but like I think the phrase like there's no such thing as like a free lunch came from that book, um, which says a lot about it. It's very oh, libertarian, but, but it's like um, hmm? on a scale of one to Ayn Rand, I like not Ayn Rand libertarianism, like free love polyamory um libertarianism oh okay I've talked to that yeah yeah it's not the like authoritarian libertarianism and like the like republicanness it's more yeah. of a like the main character in like it was written by robert heinlein who's like a sci-fi writer and this is a sci-fi book but he like the main character is like explicitly not white and like is like oh. referred to as like coming from a very colorful family and is like the one of like, he's like the husband of like this lady who has several husbands. Like they're in like a polypool type situation and it's just their culture. But yeah, his name's Manny and um, he's really dope. But like, he was like, he's, it's, a, it's such a weird book because it was written in the sixties. But right. like, yeah, like this character, he's like explicitly like not white, like, I, I, it's never really like I guess not explicit. It's more implicit, but like it's like if you don't, if you think he's white, you you didn't read the book well, <laughs> um, right? Like his name's like Manny. I forget his last name, but it is also pretty. Like I think when I just talked to my mom about it, um, she read him as like kind of like mixed Filipino, like Hawaiian type situation. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, a uh, first perspective, listeners. Um, my my mom grew up in Hawaii. She's white, but she grew up in Hawaii, so that makes her a little better than regular white people. I think. Yeah, I'm not wrong. Um, oh, let me I see. Just, I, the the phrase "spicy white" came into my brain, and I had to punch a part of myself. Don't do that, not to me, God. Um, yeah, his name, like the main character's name, is Manny. His is Manny Manuel Garcia O'Kelly Davis. <laughs> so they saw Manuel Garcia and went, "Ah, yes, white." Yeah, they were like that for like we're, they looked at O'Kelly Davis and were like, "That's a white man," and it, <laughs> <laughs> it just ignored um that. Yeah. Um, but like, there's there's a character in it named um Mike. Um, and he's like a, a, like, he's a Holmes AI. Like, that's what, like, he's like an augmented Holmes AI. Like, that's his, um, like how HAL 9000 is like a HAL system. He's right. a Holmes system. But like, he just gives himself, like, he just gets called Mycroft because of that. And right. then it just gets dumped down to Mike. And then he has, then he, he gains like self-awareness. And in that self-awareness, like, has a gender crisis. And is like, I want to be called Michelle. And for like a part of the book, he's called Michelle. And then he goes right back to Mycroft because he realizes I like Mike and I like Mycroft. But it like it's like very like interesting for that time. So that's why I chose it. I'm not yeah. a Sherlock BBC Kenny. I'm a Mycroft Moon is a harsh mistress Kenny. <laughs> yeah. Still a Kenny though. Still a Kenny, which is not good. Um, that's illness. Um where were we like names yes names Name. so yeah and then i was like mycroft is actually a really stupid name um so i'm just gonna be evan but i it's so weird kind of like when it comes like you mentioned like how your mom isn't really feminine my my mom um isn't really feminine either and none of my only my grandmother that on my latin side is really feminine um i grew up around solely women pretty much my entire life like my dad was in the military when i was a kid so he wasn't really there and then my parents divorced so i grew up with my mom and my grandmother and then like 
for like a year, I was, I lived with my Latin grandmother, but I still, I lived around solely women and I was part of like Girl Scouts. I was part of Girl Scouts like up until graduation. Like I got a fucking Yeah. Award. Oh my God. So was I. Yeah. I think you're the only other person I know who like stuck with it. Yeah. And we're not, we're not women. We're no, not girls. God. We're, we're girls, girls. Um, we're hashtag girls. Hashtag girls. So girl boss. Yeah, we were both in Girl Scouts, by the way. I just want to set that one up. Um, hell place. Um, yeah. And both of our moms were troop leaders. Yeah, both of our parents were troop leaders. It's great. It's fucking amazing. Uh, <laughs> but I, like, like a, and then, like, all of my mom's friends were typically women. And then they're, like, like, it wasn't just, like, women. Like, she also has, like, guy friends. But, like, the most of like the people I knew were women just because yeah like they're better um but <laughs> for, for lack of a better phrase they're better um but like I grew up around just solely women for the longest time but it wasn't I was never really brought up with like oh I need to be feminine like I like I need to be feminine mm-hmm. but I just had this like like I am not a woman but I'm also not a man but like, I think I'm like a trans man. Cause I thought like, like trans masculinity and trans madness, like I perceived it in my own way of like, oh yeah, I, I'm not a woman. I feel more like a man. So I'm trans masculine and I'm trans, I'm a trans man. Even though like after talking to a lot of other trans men, I did not have the fucking same perspective at all. Just because I, a lot of trans men I've talked to have a lot of, like they have like a close relationship where like, some relationship with like a parent like a male parent or a male relative like i know you have like a close relationship with your dad yeah like more like you have a healthier relationship with your dad than your mom yeah (laughs) if if, if, if i were to make a generalization Um, i i say that regularly yeah i was just like i'm like i feel like we've said this before um but i never really had that i just had like solely quit and like it's not like a, oh like I wish I had like Matthew it's more of like I never had it so I don't really give a shit um so like when I come into like coming into trans masculinity I just kind of realized like I how I realized I was trans mask is because like I one day like over like a course of like a week I think I was like thinking about my future of like imagining myself in my future and I kept imagining like a middle-aged man in glasses and that was me. Like I need, like I need a perspective. Like I was like when I like was like, oh yeah, I'm like a guy. It literally like I was imagining myself as a dill. Like I was like, I am gonna, I want to be a dill. And that's why I'm, that's why I'm here. Um, so I'm at this point. It's just all for the pursuit of becoming one day a dill. Um, a that's noble when I'll pursuit. Peak. It's a noble pursuit. Um, that's when I peak is when I'm forty. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just like I and then I was like, oh, okay. And that's how I decided I was like trans. But like I never really had a struggle of like wanting, oh, I want to be feminine and I want to be pretty. Like when I first came out, like this happens I think a lot with like trans people. When you first like kind of have a gender crisis, you swing your original way really tight. Yeah. Like I wore skirts in the 8th grade like right around the same time I had this crisis and I went all feminine and it wasn't like a trying to get myself out of it. At all, I don't think like it wasn't self hatred. It was just more of like, I I can be feminine. I I can perform femininity. Yeah, watch me. I can watch do me. It. Watch me. And I was very cute. I liked it. I like dresses still. Um, I I I feel like the main reason I don't like skirts is because my thighs chafe, and like I know that you can like wear shorts underneath it. It doesn't work. They roll up. Yeah, no, they roll up. No. I've only recently gotten okay with wearing dresses and skirts because I've lost a bit of weight yeah. around my, like, legs and stuff. So, like, I have, like, little twinky little chicken legs so I can wear it without yeah. chafing. But even then, it still chafes. It still yeah, chafes. no, I have, I like, all of my, like, body fat is, like, in my, like, tummy, butt, and thighs. Like, that's where it all sits. So, like, skirts just, like, don't, like, they don't give me the silhouette that I, like, want, you know? Yeah, I can totally get that. I've only recently come into like liking like trust like skirts and stuff is just because I like um 
like it was after like top surgery is when I kind of got more comfortable because it was the top silhouette I really didn't like I never liked mm-hmm. how I looked with like dresses or like accentuating the curves of my boobies I never liked it um yeah I, that's another issue that I have like a lot of dresses aren't cut to like accommodate a binder no no it's like difficult I think like this one I have like this one dress actually you know this dress um, I was gonna say do you still have that golf dress the golf dress yes um over summer break AJ my friend Jin Su, who's the, the, the straightest goddamn man ever he's and so he's he's the most delightful cisset man and then me um we all went Putt putt golfing in dresses, and we had a whole little story of that. I was the wife, my friend Jinsu was my kid, and then AJ was my husband in like a Willie Loman type vibe where we're unhappily married. And I'm Catholic, totally- Catholic, Catholic divorce. Evan's fucking the milkman and the ice man. Gotta keep your options open. <laughs> But I wore a delightful, delightful pink dress. And that, like, it was very, like, it was, like, kind of panel cut. And it looked really nice in, like... It looked really good on you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I wore a, a, a beige polo shirt for my cuckold cosplay. <laughs> cuckold cosplay? Oh, that's, like, the best way to put it. Yeah. Would you say this cuckold cosplay was gender affirming to you? Did it feel good? Yeah, there's several photos. I was wearing, I want to paint a full picture. I had a golf visor, a bad LGBT yerba, or what was it, kombucha? A bad LGBT pride kombucha skin, a beige polo, these like black and white like houndstooth pants, and these like black and white, like they look like bowling shoes. <laughs> and there's pictures of me very excitedly getting a hole in one on this putt putt. Yeah, yeah, I have the video of it. I would, yeah. Whenever we're promoting this, I'm going to link this shit. I'm going to post them. Oh. I I wore a delightful, cute pink number that looked like it came out of um, the closet of a uh, housewife in the 1970s. Um, I looked like Liberta from or- Moral Oral, but a whore. Um, it, um, I had like this pale pink dress, and then I had these little yellow um heels and then i had they were not little they were chunky they were they weren't like high heels yeah that's what i mean by little they're little they're not high but they were like chunky in like an ugly way um they were pretty ugly um and then i had i had like long hair at that point and i also hadn't shaved and it was kind of greasy um i was a hot milk yeah I was a delightful mill. That was affirming. Like, yeah. I think, at least for me, when it comes to trans masculinity, I think that a good part of trans masculinity is like the performance of gender. Oh, absolutely. Like, gender is a performance. And I'm going to play all the fucking parts. Yeah, that's why I like, that's why I like novelty earrings, because they don't have like as strong of like a feminine connotation. But they're still, like, fun. Like, I'm currently wearing rubber ducky earrings. I've got, like, Connect 3 earrings. I've got, like, spoon earrings. I've got little baby earrings. Like, I, Etsy is my uh, vice. <laughs> <laughs> I have an ungodly amount of charms that has no gender. Um, do you want to see my It's Always in Sunny Philadelphia time? Absolutely, I do. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god. I have like several. That's so funny. And then here's Dennis. Nice. Oh god, I can't. I don't have any like directional skills. Is Patty's Pub like actually in Philly? Do you know? I think there is. I think there's like a mock up of it. Like someone made a pub called Patty's Pub. Fuck. I need to go to Philly with you to go. Yeah, come visit me. Fuck yeah. Okay. We'll plan this shit. Plan we it. We'll plan it off <laughs> off the air. Off the air, we're gonna plan Patty's pub. T-boy swag episode, Patty's pub. Yeah. 
God, that's going to be awful. We can talk <laughs> about how Charlie Day is so gender in all in any role he's in. He has immaculate okay. T-boy swag. I, okay, I this is way too convoluted to explain on air, but Paul Blart, Charlie Day gender. That's all I have to say. No, no, I get it. I get it. Like, have Paul you, Blart have you- is gender, like, to a degree. No, okay, Paul Blart is so shit, but... Hear me out. Have you seen the first movie? Of course. Okay, just making sure. Um, we watched it scene. together, I think. <laughs> the, we the first one. I think so. Because we watched the okay. first one and then we watched the third one. Not not the, sec- the second. The one. second. There's no third one. There's, there's no second. Is the third? Is the second one then? Yeah. We watched both. A, we watched both. Okay. Well, in the first one, there's a scene where his, his mom's trying to help him set up a dating app and. <laughs> And she's like, all right, what are your interests? And he's like, well, I know a lot about sharks. And she goes, I'm going to stop you right there. And it's the comedic timing on it is really good. But then there's a, a thing and it's of um, a video of him doing like Segway tricks that he, like, who was he record? And it wasn't originally, like, he didn't record it for his dating profile. So like, who was he recording it for? He's a sad sack of shit in his life. <laughs> mess. He's not like famous yet in universe. Like in the second movie, it's like, oh, we still talk about your Black Friday save. Okay, Donna, I'm sure you do. But like in the first one, his life just sucks that he's a nobody from New Jersey. Like, who is this video for? And that reminded me of the Charlie Day scene where he's like, Goblin. where are you? It's ghouls. Ghouls. Like that whole scene. And I and we were saying that Charlie Day was gender. So then I wanted to say that Paul Blart is gender, but he's not because I hate him. <laughs> I think he could be gender. You know what? I think Paul, okay, he may not be our gender, but, but, I think. He sucks. He, He's a terrible person. And not I think he has T Boy. He has T Boy swag. No. You just hate girl bosses winning. You know who has trans flag is Maya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maya Paul Blart's daughter in the second movie has this really cute bathing suit. It's like not like it's like camp. It's got like ruffles and like yes. patterns and shit. I love that by association, Rainy has trans swag. Yeah, Rainy has trans swag. I like that. I just think I think Paul Blart could have trans mass swag, and I'm just saying this because I have an unfortunate screenshot from my friend. Um, guess whose story it was someone that i have tormented you with before oh god is this the the i can't remember their name but i know who you're talking about radigay Rat boy radigay that's who it is radigay they're my beloved um they have this fucking picture on their and it's like a fucking like gay peter like from family guy and they just captioned it this is why i'm never going public with my gender envy list and like that was it and i was just like like art say psych like please so paul blart could be gender to someone that someone someone might be radigate i'll have to someone someone saw the scene where they drip pink pink sticky cream on his face and went yeah that's gender i i feel like i should i have an encyclopedic knowledge of the movie <laughs> Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 because I'm sick in the head. <laughs> You're so ill. I remember when we were watching it, you were like, you were explaining everything and I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was like a year, that was like over a year ago. It was so long ago. That was before ago. I went to college. Like, I've gotten worse. I now <sighs> know things about, I know trivia about the actors now. I have done Blart Side of the Moon, where you watch the movie with the volume turned down, synced up to Pink Floyd's album, Dark Side of the Moon. I've held my friends hostage and made them watch that, my like college friends. Yeah, I've gotten worse. <laughs> I need to do that. Like, that'd be a great episode. It's like, so a, a Piss Boy live event is... <laughs> well, on, on Till Death Do Us Blart, they did a director's commentary on the movie where they watched the movie and, like, recorded themselves talking about it as it went on. Oh, my God. I just, I want to do the Blart Side of the Moon yeah. so bad. Like, that'd be a great Piss Boy event. 
yeah, next time, next time I'm in California, we should get high and do that. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. You know what? Like pathologic video it was incredible high. <laughs> Jenna Marbles was incredible high. I think Paul Blart with Dark Side of the Move would change. I think it would I make me it better. Would. I think I it think it would fix me. I think it could definitely fix me. I also love that like we're just bringing it, like 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 so much of the stuff we're talking about is just so like T boy swagging in itself. Like this is why we're trans masculine. This is why we're handshaking. Yeah. Like all of it. The Paul Blart, like you get it, you get it, you don't, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Literally, I cannot recommend enough that you watch Paul Blart Mall Cop 2, not to enjoy a movie, but to experience a spectacle. Yeah, no, like it is a hundred percent an experience. It is a it's like a hodge, if you will. Like it's yeah. <laughs> You're in religious movement watching it, okay? Sometimes I think about how my obsession with Dungeons and Dragons and my obsession with Paul Blair Mall Cop 2, which are like my two big like interests at the moment, like came from the same man. You're so white. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, just because like... Unfortunately, that man is Griffin McElroy because 2016 was just a different time for me. <laughs> You were in a bad place. I was in a bad place. Huntington Beach. Sophomore, I was in Huntington Beach in my sophomore year of high school. Nothing in my life was going well. Bad place. I, I, I seriously, the same person. I was just like, fucking white. White. Yeah. I'm happy. I never really had a McElroy moment. I, I just, I listened to like a big chunk of um, Amnesty. Not was it Amnesty? Yeah, Amnesty no. was the second one. No, nah, was the first. Listen to all of Balance except for the finale. Except for the finale, yeah. I didn't listen to the last two episodes. <laughs> um, and then I listened to. Then I like watched like Monster, the Monster Factory, and oh my god, yeah. Um, um, and bam, bam, like the my brother, my brother, and me. I listened to that a bit, but not a lot. Just kind of like while I was yeah. doing work. Um, yeah, Monster Factory holds up. Ma- Monster Factory fucking holds up to hell. It's so good. The it's so funny. Monster Monster Factory Fallout is beautiful. It's so good. It, if you if you want a good laugh, go to YouTube and type in Monster Factory. My personal one of my favorites is uh, Dwayne the Pebble Johnson. That's a classic. Um, the Spore me, episode is really good. The spore ones are really good. Spore ones really good. Um, the Dark Souls one is really good. <laughs> Dark Souls one is really good, yeah. Um, I found the I found the screenshot. I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this part out of the audio just because like I can't show them okay. something on audio. But oh god, if it if it will, you gotta turn your brightness down. Ah, fuck me. Is that too dark? I can. This is what This goes with me to the grave. Number one. Oh no. They're so ill. They're so ill. God. Fuck it. Just they say shit and I'm like, I... Vic, I love you, but I fucking hate you. <laughs> you Cause me so much pain. Um, but yeah, going back to the actual episode. Um, yeah, like fucking... My brother, my brother and me made a whole generation of white trans masculine people, I think um like it just they just created it <laughs> yeah i think so because like i know so like i feel like almost every full white like trans mass person i know likes D and it is probably traces back to um the adventure zone it could I'm be like, worse it could be critical role it's like typically what happens is like it's either critical role or um the adventure zone or entry drugs and typically they lead into each other so I, I view yeah. them as like equals. They're the yeah. same. I think critical role is worse because Matthew Mercer annoys me personally, but like that's he's my problem. Annoying. He is fucking annoying. <laughs> um he's kind of a fucking dumb elf head. I'm sorry. Um I'm sorry. I'm not. Yeah. I don't know. There's sometimes like I guess like like I am very white. I look really white. But, like, sometimes when it comes to, like, being trans-masculine and, like, being, like, in spaces that are super white, like, I'm, like, I kind of get it. 
but in the same way that like I kind of like when I'm like in regular mix like re- regular white spaces as a mixed person where I'm just like I get this a hundred percent but I'm also dil- built different like <laughs> it's like I get it I'm a hundred percent yeah I am this as well but I have another side and I'm built different I'm not built better I'm just built different <laughs> I like that. That's a good, that's a fun phrase. I'm going to steal that. I'm not built better. I'm just built different. <laughs> built different. Me at classic major. Back to trans masculinity. Right. Huh. It's fucking weird being, I guess, like trans masculinity. More like, I guess, like the worst part of being trans like, I guess being trans in general is cis people. I think. I fucking, yeah. like, I need to say this. Um, I'm like kind of trans separatist, not in the way of like, oh, drop the T, but more of like, I fucking like, I, I do not care about LGB cis people. I do not care. I, I kind it. of, they're all second thought. Like whenever, like, um, cause I like, I do work with like programming and stuff. And then like, I've, but previous to this in high school, I did a lot of work with the, our LGBT center in our area. And I um worked a lot with their trans specific coordination so i worked with a lot of trans people and i always think of like whenever i'm making stuff hence this show i think of trans people first because i kind of really don't care about cis people yeah i it's interesting to me because like for me and for a lot of people and like i'm sure this is partially true for you too like gender and sexuality are so like inextricable that like I don't know. It's it's interesting because like I definitely agree with you that like trans people have been like integral to this community and like ignored forever and like treated like shit and like second thoughts and like I'm sick I'm sick of it. Like I I go to a college that's like oh we have so many LGBT people and it's like okay acknowledge the T ever please. God, like, stop calling it a women's college. I'm going to strangle you. None of my friends are cis. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really have a point that, that I'm making. I just kind of started talking. But like, I think that's a really interesting thing of like, where, where we draw the line between like different identities and like the function of community. And I think that's a whole other like podcast or not podcast, radio show topic. Yeah, I think, like, it's kind of, I find it interesting, because I think, like, this is one place where we do differ a lot, is, like, how we label each other, how we label ourselves, and, like, how much our labels mean to, like, like, the the, the actual words mean, you know? Yeah. Like, for me, I view myself kind of as queer trans mask, like, that's how I just describe myself, because I don't see myself as like I don't really self-describe as non-binary just because a lot of like non-binaries has the implicitness of like third gender and a lot of like circles which isn't yeah. its intention like I am non-binary in like a, def- a definitive sense by, by connotation like denotation versus connotation um I don't self-describe myself I just go with queer trans mask because I am trans mask and then when it comes to sexuality I have no fucking clue and I've never been able to figure it out so I just was like, you know what? Queer's pretty good. Queer's pretty good. So yeah, I, I self-describe as that. Yeah, and I've been identifying as a lesbian for like eight years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like well, I, I was describing it as a bunch of other shit that was functionally lesbian. I was just really caught up in micro identities. And then I expanded my conception of lesbianism beyond cis women attracted to cis women and was like oh okay so I was just a lesbian that whole time yeah I think like at least like from what I've gathered from like talking to you over the years is like a lot of your gender is directly connected like your gender is like is lesbianism to a degree like like that's a central part of your gender yeah and for me it's like sexuality really came like second thought like I I knew like when I first came out as trans I was like I'm a guy what now and I was like I like men still so it's like I guess I'm gay but I'm also like I like women a lot um (laughs) so I was like I guess I'm like fire pan Uh and then I just was like you know what fuck this this is confusing 
you get ambiguity. Like sometimes questions aren't meant to be answered. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the mystery is good. Yeah. I think there's something like really cool about like, like intentional ambiguity and like, I don't know, to me, like I find that I think a lot of like, queerness i'm personally not a fan of using queer to describe the whole community because it's not a word i'm super comfortable with ascribing to like myself personally like if you want to do it like good for you like genuinely but it's just like yeah. I, to me the word lesbian was like something that it took me a while to come to so like i want to use it and i want to use it intentionally because it's the word that i feel that, like describes me best and i don't want that to be ignored particularly because i am trans mask and a lot of people want to are, are unable to, to compute the idea of a trans masculine lesbian. And so like, are, like you, know, you see people being like, how can you use he, him pronouns and be a lesbian? It's like, oh my God, how can you wear pants and be a woman? Like you have the most elementary understanding concept. You have the most elementary understanding of, of gender presentation, good God. Yeah, I would like to say like also with like pronouns, like so much, like there's such a like one thing that like it took me a while to come to terms with was like I guess the acceptance that like pronouns mean nothing. They're just other they're ways to um like objectively refer to oneself without the name. Um yeah. and like for the longest time, like I was like I used he him pronouns solely. I was never really a fan of they. I'm still not. I just don't like I, I'm okay with it. It's not a preferred pronoun, but I'll live with it. Um, and then like Z her is like it's like a neo pronoun. And it literally I started using it because I just grew attached to this to this character in a comic book who used it. And I was just like, this bitch is the most gender I've ever seen in my life. The like, one who's dropped in bandages, right? Yeah, the one who's dropped wrapped in bandages, and then there's like the like this one part of the panel. It's, um Rita's from Doom Patrol, the original run Doom Patrol. Well, not original, Morrison run. That's nerd shit. But um, there's like this one panel where like Z's like wear like all bandaged up, and then she's also wearing like boxers, a bra, and then a pearl necklace and sunglasses, and that's the entire fit. And it it's so like it's really beautiful, and like also there's like a whole like. Um, because like basically this character is like a blend of three it's a blend of two people and like a uh, spirit I guess in one person like the spirit blended two people and one was a a white like fighter pilot and the other was like a black um, doctor and like a whole part of it is like being like mixed race mixed sex like mixed identity in general and my brain is just like a wooga <laughs> so that's that's what that's where I, I use these products. It's like it's like I think a lot of people are like oh my god like I get really like kind of like oh I don't want to show this around like cis people like my pronouns really just because it's like like you're not viewing them the way I want you to but like other trans people it's like yeah you know what I'm talking about yeah like when I'm introducing myself in like classes like I don't introduce myself with the she pronoun because I know that there's cis people who are like not going to get it and like so like by default I use he him but like if I'm like with my like in a group like if I'm in like my theater group it's like okay you people are going to be getting to know me because I'm your stage manager and we're going to be hanging out a lot and I trust, and I also already know that most of you are trans anyway. So you guys can get the she pronoun because I trust that like most of you will understand the ones who don't will come to understand. But if you're in my like anthropology class and you're a, like, if you have the turf voice, then like, I don't trust you to understand it. Yeah, I feel that. Like when I feel kind of like, I feel like a combination when it comes to like using like my zebra pronouns like in public, it's like a combination of like I'm like no one's gonna understand this so I don't want to do it but then also on the indoor side I'm like this is a power move like I kind of want to make you uncomfortable and that's why I put it I put it a lot in like public stuff sometimes just to, just to make people kind of comfortable yeah well not because I give a shit <laughs> the second I start passing as ma like a quote a dude more often than not because the reason I don't introduce myself with she pronouns yet is because people are going to think that's an excuse to use she her pronouns for me because they read me as a woman 
but I'm getting to the point where that's not where that's going to stop happening at some point. And when it does, when people stop defaulting to she, then I'm going to start using she to fuck with people. Fuck yeah. Yes. Yes. The trans agenda of just making other people's lives miserable. Yeah. My goal with pronouns is to confuse cis people and make trans people feel recognized. Right. So I get clocked as cis a lot just because I look like some guy. So, like, when I use the Z-Her, it's like, I am not a cis man. If you view me as a cis man, don't. That's on you. <laughs> yeah, that's on you, not me. Like, I'm not a cis man. That's also been really weird, but, like, like kind of transitioning is because, like, since I grew up with such a feminine focus in everything, like, right. I never really had, like, I never really interacted with men as much. Like, if I'm in a class with people... And I don't know anybody. I'm probably going to gravitate to some like group of girls, as opposed to some guy. And it isn't out of like, a, oh, I'm trying to like get with you. And I, I think sometimes it gets spread as that where I'm like, learning, but I'm like, no, I'm. Sometimes yes, most of the times you're just friend shaped, and I'm here. I am not a cis man. Please do not perceive me as a cis man. Yeah, I am just a lad. Like when it comes to like cis men. Like, I have a handful of cishet men in my life, or, like, just cis men. Like, I'm trying to think, like, Jinsu's a really only cishet man. That I'm, like... And, Jinsu's and he's a, a cis... Jinsu, the, the, we've described Jinsu before as the perfect man for bisexual women. Yes, 100%. He's interesting. He's, like, the only cishet man I know. I know, like, other cis men, but they're not het, I guess. Yeah. Um... He's like, like, I don't know. It's just like, there's like, there, like there's varying levels of guy, I guess. Like, even I get this like in trans mass circles where sometimes I'm talking to people and they're just so like leaning into that part of like masculinity that like, I get like, it's not really toxic in the sense, like at least where I'm coming from, not like the toxic part, just like this annoying personality right. that like cis men have too. And I'm just like, I can't do this. I can't. I don't know. Yeah. I've determined like my ideal friend shape is like typically some sort of lesbian and typically like the group, like the group that I've like been like, you're my ride or die are um, trans butch lesbians. They are, yeah. the, the vibes are fucking immaculate. And they're so great. Like, I'm like, oh, wow, I don't have to worry about anything with you. This is great. <laughs> I also feel the need to put the PSA out there of if you're cis and you've gotten this far and you somehow think it's okay for you to speculate on if people have cis or trans energy. Don't. Oh, yeah, don't. this is. <laughs> we're going to be covering what T-boy swag is. And basically, cis people don't fucking touch it. It's ours. Yeah. It's ours. Literally. We. You get to listen to us talk at you. We're not talking to you. We're talking at you. This is a conversation yeah. between us. You're just privy and listening. Yeah. Like, says people don't, don't point, like, don't do the thing that my mom does where she points at people in the grocery <laughs> store and asks me if I think they're gay. Like, don't do that. It's weird. Don't be AJ's mom in the <laughs> Ralphs in Huntington Beach. <laughs> Yeah, some close. Let's see. What are our final thoughts on mask and trans masculinity? What are your final thoughts? Um, I think my th final thought of the evening is that Jack Black has T boy swag, and it's because he's Jewish. And if you get it, you get it. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly, exactly. I concur with this closing statement, and I would say that like most Jewish American male actors have T boy swag. They all do. They all do. It's the Jewishness. Um, <laughs> Mazel Tov. Um, <laughs> thank you for listening this far. Um, I love you all. I love you, AJ. Thank you for I coming. I love you, Evan. Thanks yeah. for having me. <laughs> no problem. Um, enjoy the music that has been played throughout. There's a T Boy Swag playlist. Um, my Instagram for this show hasn't really been created. I have an account, but I don't have like anything on it. And it's T, it's like T boy, but like the O is an underscore dot swag. 
Um, hopefully I'll have something on it by the time this is live. Um, yeah, thank you. And listen again, we're bi-weekly every Monday at noon on UCLA radio. Please enjoy. Please come listen to me ramble on and on. There's too many cis people on that website making making radio shows. This this is this is mutual aid. This is trans mutual aid. Yeah, that's what it is. It's fucking like I'm not getting anything out of it besides like affection and like attention. And I need that, okay? It's the age. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks. Bye.